Hello everyone. Hello, hello. I'm Tony. And I'm Tally. And we are the Lazy, Lazy Book, Book Lovers. Lovers. This I got so distracted by you picking crumbs out your brother. <laughs> just like getting the crumbs out my boobs. <laughs> it was so distracting because you were just there like picking things Sorry. off your body. <laughs> I was thinking I'm distracting you, aren't I? Because I could see you kind of half looking at me. Anyway, this is a oh. podcast of book lovers who procrastinate about reading and have never-ending to-be-read piles. Today we're bringing you a little reading update of what we've been reading lately. It is quite close to our last one because of uh, poor planning on my part. Uh, and it's just how we do. It's just how it shook out. Um, oh, shook um, <laughs> so yeah, this is just what we've been reading. Probably it's it's like a month ish. We only talk about sort of the highlights, partly because especially Tally is reading way too much at the moment for us to cover them all in the podcast. You can follow us both on Storygraph. Uh, the link it's linked in our card link in the description if you want to see all the books we're reading. Or we do have a Facebook group, and if you wanted to support us financially, we also have a Kofi subscription to an exclusive Discord. So that's kind of like Patreon, and you get a uh, link to a Discord. So if you want to be part of like a book community and chat with us a bit more, those are the places to go. But if not, you're just getting the ones we really want to talk about. Slash, I haven't actually read that much. You're actually just getting the books that I have read. <laughs> yeah, we've been on uh, opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, it's not been your worst reading though since we've done this, started this podcast. No, Three years. I know that's crazy. Oh, that sounded a bit excitable, but. Three years. I know. It's been like, yeah, three years since I we said were... that to Nick yesterday and he was like, three years? I know. <laughs> already? Like, I've already. just never committed to something this 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 much. No. For so little rewards. <laughs> 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 no, I'm kidding. Obviously. Not, but... I'm sort of not kidding. <laughs> it's the emotional rewards. <laughs> I was looking at jobs on LinkedIn mm. earlier and I saw one that was like for a content creator or whatever part-time it was like mm. three days a week and I was like oh, maybe and remote and I was like oh, maybe I went into it read the whole thing I was like I match all of this what they want to do I can mm. do that da, 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 go all the way to the bottom this is not a paid position it's for exposure and I was like you fucking I know words. there were so many of them when I was job hunting exposure doesn't pay the bill or they were like oh it's freelance and then you actually read it and it's like yeah it's freelance but we expect you to be at your desk doing a nine to five blah 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 like mm. we just don't want to have to play pay employee benefits yeah and pay your tax. or we expect yeah. you to have you in the office as a freelance employee like no that's just an employee you want do you have less rights basically yeah exactly like they get no pension or <laughs> whatever no like, sick pay my the jobs I did cleaning wise, technically I do like freelance. Mm. I'm like, I'll be there at about half nine. Sometimes I'm a bit later because yeah. life. And um, once one of the people was like, I thought you were meant to be here at half nine. And I was like, yeah, I'm freelance. <laughs> like, what you gonna do? Ten minutes late, sorry. My kids wanted to show me a picture as I was leaving the door. What do you want to... It what? is what it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've got no no time for places that don't allow for you to be human mm. and like if you're a few minutes late here or there at the end of the day beings. i'm cleaning your shit up like yeah but even like in a corporate job <laughs> like a corporate office yeah, job yeah. like i do like human beings are human beings also like if you got if it's an employee who generally tries their best and works hard and is good and then you're gonna nitpick about time management in that sense at one of my retail jobs, when I worked retail, it was in our contract that we had to be there 15 minutes for was our start time. Was it you going to pay time. me? Yeah, I didn't get paid for it. And then, so I didn't turn up until no. my start time. I was on the floor at the time I started. And I kept getting written up for it. Yeah. For being late. And I, I was like, I'm not late. Thing. I'm not late at all. So I worked somewhere that they expect us to come in and prep our tills unpaid before. No. So, and they were like, you're meant to be in from half past eight, but we don't get paid till nine. Yeah. So you know what I would do? I'd walk in at half past eight. And sit down. No, I would prep my till. Yeah. Because someone would be in the building, so it was safe to leave the till prepped and locked. So I'd come in, prep my till, leave. Yeah, come back at nine. And everyone was pissed off. The other employees my age, like my level, Yeah. pissed off about it. But I was like, they can't do anything because they're not paying me yet. No. So I'll go and get myself a fucking coffee. coffee Or do a little errand because other shops are open. So that's what I would do. Because I was like, you're not paying me. Yeah. And the same for cinemas. <laughs> not uh, for the cinema I worked at. Mm. Um, 
they were if you because it was done in quarter like 15 minute pay jumps mm. so if you were late they you would 15 they took the whole you. 15 minutes so if i was three minutes late i lost 15 minutes pay yeah so i would go sit in the break room for 15 minutes well, yeah and managed to just be so furious about it and i was but like i'm not getting paid right now are you not gonna pay me yeah i'm not getting paid whether i walk and to buzz that and like they'd be there like at 13 minutes and they're like you need to go and i'm like i'm going yeah. at fucking 14 and a half minutes past like yeah. and like when i worked at the pub and i used to go so i i've often had two jobs i used to work retail then go to my evening mm. job at a pub um and i would obviously have some dinner in the staff room yeah. and they'd often come up and be like we're busy can you come down early and i was like oh, are you gonna pay me no, no, but, um, and I'm like, can I leave early? Oh, no, there okay. is a girl on TikTok. So we will get to the episode in a second. There's a girl on TikTok who's doing skits of, like, retail trauma. Oh. And they are just, like, I've been watching them. I don't know why I watch them. It's some kind of, it's a bit masochistic, I feel, because they are. Yeah, because it really brings it back. Really it. brings it back. But I'm in the comments of that being like, well, because um, I want her to do a skip because I've had some fucked up shit happen to me in my jobs I've had some really bad luck yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm always in the comments of like what about when my manager did this yeah exactly <laughs> like what about the time in a pub job in the kitchen I had of a very big chain in this country and a manager called me a useless C word mm. I don't know if that's too bad a word for us to say in this podcast I didn't say it I said it's C word as well yeah useless C word and then was really, really shocked the next day when I turned up with my uniform in a bag. Yeah. And I was like, I'm in my probation. I don't have to give you notice. No. They were like, you have to work your notice. I was like, no, I don't. What? I don't I don't want a reference from you. Yeah. This job is nothing to me. <laughs> this is a minimum wage pub job. Yeah. And I was at and the you time. You can't even talk to me like a human being. It was a very privileged position I was in to just quit like that. I will acknowledge it. I was a uni student living at home with my parents. I also had another job who I had, I was in good terms with, that I had said, look, I just need a bit more money, I'm going to go here. Mm. And when it didn't work out, I just turned around and texted them. And I was like, hey, um, love you guys, miss you. Sorry, <laughs> do you need help? I will come back. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, we need summer, we need help, come back. Yeah. So, and they were like, um, the door was the door was always open when I left. Because they were like, yeah, you know what, fair enough, we can't pay you more. Yeah, and we they can't give you enough. Back. <laughs> they were like, we can't give you enough shifts. Fair, go with, like, it wasn't good terms in yeah. which I left. So they were like, yeah, come back. So also there was no gap in my CV because I was technically employed by them for like that whole time. Yeah, yeah exactly. anyway. Um, oh, can we also normalise people having gaps in their CV and not having to explain why? Especially co- post-COVID. Mm, anyway. Ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, but he was so shocked. He was like, we've got you on three back-to-back 12-hour shifts. And I was like, that, Sarah, is the reason why I'm not going to work my notice. Mm. Why would why would I do that? Yeah. Why well, would I? I handed in my notice at the pub job, worked my notice, and then I got a phone call like two days later. You're on you're on road Where trip. Where are I was you? Like, I literally, my last day was two days ago. Yeah. Oh, can you come in and do the ship? No, I'm actually at university now. <laughs> so I, like... Again, people I work with are like a different generation to me or maybe haven't had to work the same jobs as me or whatever. I've just had some really fucking bad luck. I don't know. No, I think your 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 experience is pretty... Yeah. Pretty standard but for people, our age. Like, people don't believe me. <laughs> mm. So I worked in a bakery. Uh, it's a chain that's kind of local to Hertfordshire in England. And basically the manager I had there used to restrict my food intake. Have I not told you this? No. <laughs> We were like, this is going to be a quick episode, and no. now we've gone on a proper I'll, round. I'll just do this one quickly, because this, this is always a fun story to tell people, because their faces always, I'm like, that's very, no, that, mm. that was, yeah. This bakery, we were allowed to have free lunch on the, on the house, and there were rules, like, you couldn't take the mick. Yeah. But within reason, it was a sandwich or a roll, you were allowed to have, like, a cake or a pastry on the side, and it was free tea and coffee the whole day, mm. fizzy, you had to pay for. Makes sense. It's pretty good, pretty good deal. Yeah. That was not the deal I had. <laughs> oh. So the manager used to make me ask permission for everything I was getting. I was like, can I have so-and-so? Can I have a Did role? everyone have to do that? Mm, it, we're going to get to that. Is it because you were a larger lady? Yeah, we're going to get to that. Mm. Uh, so I'd be like, is it, can I have a chicken? I, I say that in like yeah. quote marks. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm not offended. <laughs> but I want to make that clear to everyone listening. <laughs> <laughs> can I have a chicken mayo roll? Can I have a gingerbread man on the side? And she'd be like, yes, no, whatever. She's off sick. Why would you say no? Mm, yeah, okay, we're going to get to that. Okay. She's off sick. 
we get a temporary manager comes in. There were these float managers that never worked permanently at one store. They yeah. were temporary managers for that reason. Yeah. And the whole day I'm going, can I have this? Can I have that? Can I have that? And she's like, she gets frustrated. And she's like, why the fuck do you keep asking me about food? And I'm like, well, because we have to. Yeah. She's like, no, you don't. Has your manager not explained the rules about what you're allowed to have? And I was like, well, no, I have to ask for everything before I get it. And then another colleague was walking by. She's like, I don't have to do that. And another colleague was like, yeah, I don't have to do that. And so it turns out it was a rule that was just for me. So yeah. then manager is back in after her sick leave. And I'm like, hey, so so-and-so said that this is the rules around food and I don't have to ask you before I grab anything. And this is a woman in her 50s, I think, or 60s. Mm. Looks me dead in my 16-year-old face and says, yeah, I thought you were getting too fat. So I decided to restrict what you could eat. I was a curvy girl. I was never fat. <laughs> if that was you There's now... There's nothing wrong with fat, but... If that was you now, you'd go to hate child with that. But I bet 16-year-old you was just so shocked. You didn't know what I to say. I think 16-year-old me was like, oh, that's a bit... That's a bit fucked up. Did you just come home and have a cry? No, I think I just remember that like, going about my day. It's really a few years later that I was like... Hang on a minute. That wasn't okay. Hmm. She also said to me... Did she carry on after that discussion as well? No, from then on I grabbed whatever the fuck I want, but she had a face on. Yeah. This is the same manager that if I was 30 seconds late, she'd time 30 seconds off my break. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, some managers in retail are just have a fucking power, power trip. trip. She genuinely said to me... One morning when we were doing an open together, she said to me, I hired you because I thought you'd be a pushover and I'm really disappointed you're not. She also says she only hired girls because boys are gross. And then we had a temporary staff member from another story kept coming to help us out that was a dude. He was quite icky towards the girls. So maybe she was right in that sense. No, he was our age. Oh. He was just a creep. 16. Yeah. Just, yeah. And she only hired pretty girls as well. Mm. She had this whole thing about it, but she wanted pretty girls behind the counter. Is it because she was a troll? Yeah. And she had us all on different wages. So I don't know. And this isn't allowed anymore. But she used to like be like, oh, if you can fill the drinks cabinet in under five minutes. It's a hu- it was a wall back mm. then. It was a wall of drinks cabinet. She's like, if you can fill that in under five minutes, I'm going to put your wages up 30 pence an hour. So she had us all on different out? wages. She told us it was... Com- I don't understand how HR never stepped in on this. Well, she, she got moved, quote, to a less stressful store. Ah, not long after Probably because of all of her fucking crazy rules. No, someone finally made a complaint and it uh. got pushed through. But she was notorious. If I, if you went to another store to help out and you said, I work at so-and-so's store, they're like, oh. oh poor you. Oh. And it used to be a bit of street cred because I could go to any of these bakeries long after I stopped working at them and go, oh, I worked under so-and-so's store. And they'd be like, oh. Mm. Mm. She knows. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. Right. Whew. Anyway, books. So, <laughs> Twin Crowns. Have you read this one yet? It did the rounds on... Mm, Shimmy the cover. I'm sure I'm going to know it. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I haven't read it, but I do know what Caf- it is. By Catherine Doyle and Catherine Webber. One spelt with a C, one spelt with a K. And this is a fantasy rom-com. It's referred to here. I guess that's a good way to describe it. And, uh, it's just a romance. Um, it's a YA and it follows um Ren and Rose who oh so <laughs> Rose is princess right this is in a world where magic and witches are seen as a bad thing so if you have magic you try and hide it because otherwise you will be hunted down and killed by like okay the royal family um so princess Rose <laughs> <laughs> her parents died her parents were killed by witches not long after she was born. Right, okay. Okay, so that's why the um, the kingdom hates witches. Right, 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 right. So she is being raised in the palace um, by her uncle. He's like the regent who like obviously stands in till yeah, she yeah. comes of age. He despises witches, obviously, so he spends a lot of his time hunting witches Ren is Rose's twin sister who no one knows was born just after Rose and then the midwife who was a witch took Ren away out of the castle and ran and she got the blame for killing the uh, king and queen 
Oh. And that's why they say she ran, and that's why they blame witches. Right, okay. And she's raised Wren in secret in um, a... She is a witch, the midwife. She's uh, She raises Wren in secret in a, like, witch hideout, and they are basically like a resistance group. Okay. So at the very beginning of the story, Wren breaks into the castle, and then someone who's accompanying her takes Rose... They drug her in her sleep and take her, and Ren takes her place. Okay, interesting. Yeah, and she is then pretending to be Rose. She does a spell so that she looks a bit more like Rose, but they're quite identical anyway. And she lives as Rose, intending to take the crown and then change the rules about witches. Okay. And um, Rose wakes up being taken across the desert to this witch camp. Right. Yeah, and it was really, really fun. It does sound interesting. It was a really fun adventure. Um, The second book's out now, I think. I don't know if it's a duology or a trilogy. But, yeah, it was really good. They, uh, there's three of them, and they're all mm. out now. Okay. The love interest for each of the princesses was great. Okay. Um, The whole magic thing. So, obviously, Ren has magic, which means that rose has magic she's just not aware of it and then it starts coming out when she's like living with the witches and it's not and like ren expects it to be really easy she's learned all about like she learns all of the names of like the people in rose's life her relationship yeah. to them she learns all the duties and that and then she gets there and finds out that rose is um betrothed and she didn't know that and oh. she's like suddenly got to have this meal with her fiance <laughs> and she finds him to be this sniveling like oh. gross prince and uh it is really funny uh, mm. it's really good yeah and it says it's for fans of the selection which i agree because i love that series yeah and caravel so You've read that, I don't know mm. what you think. But it was really good. And the ending of the first book was brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Recommend. I listened to it as an audio and it was really good because they had different narrators for each. I like when they do each that. Each twin as well. Mm. Mm. Okay, so my first one for this update is The Amethyst Kingdom, the fifth book in the Five Crowns of Oakrith series by so A.K. Mulford. It's, it's done now. The series is ended. Were you sad to leave, this? Were you sad to leave the world? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. I thought the conclusion, how it wraps up everyone's storylines, I liked it. Mm. However, so this character, I'm going to do this spoiler free, or this is the fifth book. So this is author that we like from TikTok. She actually came to us through one of our, we do indie episode, fe like feature episodes. She was on our first ever one, I think. Yes. Mm. And I read it, absolutely fucking loved the first book and then have stuck with it. Yeah. And read the rest. She's gone to be... She's got... The series is now traditionally published. So I have... You've gone through all of her series. Yeah. 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 I've got three different versions of the books because <laughs> it, well, I've got the indie versions and then I've got when they went to hardback and then the hardbacks not being produced. So now I've got paperbacks and yep. none of the series matches. I'm going to have to buy them at some point. But yeah. Anyway, anyway I'm going to maybe Future do that as... Future problem. Birthday presents, I think we're yeah. going to do that as. So the character... Yeah, every book focuses on a different character. And my issue with this book is... Because of the nature of this character, Karis, which is mm. part of, like, in the first book, yeah. the main guy's little band of soldiers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's one of them. The nature of Karis's character is, like, she's got pretty bad depression mm. and keeps herself apart from people because she doesn't want them kind of getting to know, like, getting too deep. Too close, yeah. Because they're going to figure it out. She's terrified of being found out. She carries a lot of shame for her depression. She thinks herself as quite weak. Like, everyone else has got problems. What right does she have? She lived a bit of a silver spoon life until events that happen just before she turns an adult, where she loses her father, her family castle burns down. She has already got a fated mate. Something happens that splits them apart. Aww. And that he betrays her in a way she doesn't think she can ever come back from. Aww. So she just leaves that entire life behind, joins our main, main character from the first book, and... That and that from there. So, like, Brie does kind of know her story, like a few yeah. characters do. Nilo, who is our main character in book four, um, really knows, was her friend before and after these events as well. So knew her before when she was a bratty fae mm. princess kind of thing and knew her after. But the thing is, because Karis kept herself so separate, I really didn't give us much of a fuck about her story. Ah, oh, Okay. 
So I arrived into it not... She's in all five books and she's... But you weren't like chomping at the bit for her story. No, I didn't I didn't feel like I cared enough about her. Yeah. And her, you know, her backstory, we don't get it until this book. So it's all kind of piled on you in this book. Whereas I think it could have been... Maybe it could have been sprinkled throughout. Drip fed yeah. earlier. We get the impression that she's sad and something happened to her. And like the rest of them will go chasing like partners all around when they were young and they were part of this band of soldiers moving around with their handsome prince. You know, they were all chasing Skirt and living their best lives and she was just never really took part in that apart from the drinking. Yeah. And then all those people are now crowned rulers of different kingdoms in Nocrith. Mm. And she's like, okay, my job now is to become, to one of the courts, their ruler in the, the wars that happened throughout the other books. He has been, he's a bad guy, so he gets defeated. And then there's a competition held to basically elect the next one. So the mm-hmm. people are choosing, but based on a bunch of competitions. And she helps rebuild the court in the initial stages after the big war. Yeah. So everyone's like, well, obviously you're our next queen. And she's just going along with it. She's just going along with the motion. She has no plan. She doesn't want to really be queen. But And all her friends are gone in different mm, courts. So she's like, what else am I going to do? Yeah. And then she's like, at least this way if I'm royal, like I get to go to all the royal things with them. Even though she'd have been invited anyway. So it's all a bit silly depression thinking as mm. well. Yeah, been there. And yep. the more isolated she becomes from her friends, the worse and worse it's getting. And then part of this competition, her fated mate who betrays her turns up to compete as well. Mm. And then that just brings back all these memories that she has been uh, shoving down. Yeah. <laughs> she has had a stranglehold on all these memories and suddenly it's walking around the palace. Yeah. And it's just about the trials and also the big bad who has been the secret big, big bad throughout. Mm. We learn that like the guy that just gets defeated in the earlier books, our enemy in the earlier books, mm. which you have seen. Mm-hmm. He is kind of being helped by this overall arching big bad. Yeah, okay. So that's kind of... But that's that defeating of that... Bear in mind this has been the enemy that has been working behind the scenes for five books. It felt very... Underwhelming? The actual ending is quite... Blah, but the actual... the the It was a subplot to this fifth book. Mm, okay. So yeah, I was surprised. Because I, I love this author's writing. Yeah. They are just like, ugh, always, mm. usually. But then I didn't really enjoy Bree's book that much as well. Mm. Was that number three? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't enjoy Bree's book as much. I love Nilo's book. Mm-hmm. One and two I loved. Nilo's book I loved. The ending to this, like the, how it all kind of ends, is quite good. Like there is a moment where you're like, fuck, they, they, there's no going back from this. I like it when they have things. So they have that moment and then like shit just happens. We save, we save the day. So yeah. I, th- I found this book really sad. Mm. It's a really sad book. And maybe I just wasn't in sad book headspace. Yeah, to like emotionally dive into it. Because like she is kind of spiralling into the deep dark depths mm. throughout these trials. And she's being confronted with her fated mate who won't explain why he betrayed her. And she just can't get past it. Why he, he won't just tell her why. And also... Do when they he- know they're fated? Yeah. 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 They were like... They were, so he betrayed her knowing they were fated. Yes. No. And knowing he would lose her over it. Fuck. Yeah. But he turns out he had good motives, so it's like... Yeah. But the moment where we go from still hating him to forgiving him, that felt a bit rushed... Too quickly, yeah. ...to me. So, yeah, I don't know. I've got mixed feelings about this one. Mm. I do think it wrapped up the end... The ending wrapped up the series really well. Yeah. I think Karis's ending is a good ending. Yeah. I just didn't care about her that much. Sometimes that happens. Yeah, and this is—I mean, there's a really, there's a really like, oh, uh, gut wrenching bit where so Nilo, who has known Karis her whole life, they've always been friends. Nilo is like quite quiet, quite bookish, not outwardly empathetic, but very inwardly empathetic. And Karis hasn't been talking to anyone. She is mm. she is isolated herself because she's convinced like they've got better things to do. They've got their fate and mates now. Like they don't need me. Isolation, depression, thinking. And Nilo calls her through. They have these things called fey fires that they can talk through. Nilo calls her through the fey fires, and Nilo's just like something's off. Mm. So Nilo just goes, Karis, can you please hold on a little longer?" Oh. And I was like, "Oh, gut punch!" And Karis is just like. Oh, fuck, you've seen right through me. I'm so weak. I'm so pathetic. 
and he's like, yeah, I'm fine. And Nilo's like, chat and shit. Yeah. And so Nilo doesn't say anything, but contacts all five kingdoms and all her pals. It's and like, basically... Something's going on, mate. Like, and then basically has them waiting for her when she returns back to the main city this all takes place in, because they're on a little trip. And then they come back. And she has them all waiting. And I thought that was a really... And then they, Nilo is just like, yeah, I'm going to go sit over here with a book. I bought all the, the ones who can cuddle you. I bought the things. I bought the, the cuddle people. I'll go over there now. Yeah. I'm going to go over here with my book. So <laughs> that was all quite cute. But I, yeah, maybe I just wasn't in sad book headspace. Yeah. And this was so much sadder than I was prepared for. Or maybe that character just didn't vibe for you. Yeah. I liked Carrie's in the other books. Yeah. But this one, I don't, yeah. It just mm. wasn't... Maybe I was the wrong fit for it at the time I was reading it. Could be either or. Possibly, yeah. So I read the first book in the Regency Dragon series called Scales and Sensibility. <laughs> I've not God, read sounds amazing. Sense and Sensibility. <laughs> um, but this is a... Uh, Have you seen the film? Was no. It? Okay. no. This is a uh, reimagining of that featuring dragons. So because I haven't read Sense and Sensibility, I don't know how much it follows that storyline <laughs> but i really enjoyed this okay so it follows eleanor trigarf who is like well her parents have died and she's been taken in by her uncle she's a ward she's a ward yes she is treated like crap she's treated like a maid and she decides she's gonna leave with her like four gold coins or whatever the fuck she has and in this world people who are like want to be like Fancy in the court have a pet dragon that sits on their so- oh. shoulder. <laughs> like a little mini dragon, there's a picture of it. Oh. And it's like the fashion thing to yeah. do. And her cousin oh, Penelope has a pet dragon because she's like oh, about to be de- outed. Debut. <laughs> debut. <laughs> about to be outed. No, she's about <laughs> to be debuted. Um, they do say come out to yeah, society. Come out yeah. to society. And she treats the dragon so badly. So the dragon has, like, anxiety and froze up all the time. And Eleanor's, like, the only one that looks after a dragon. And she talks to it, like, like not like a fashion accessory, but like a pet. She talks to it. She feeds it on her lap. She looks after it. She pets it. And it loves Eleanor. So she decides to uh, run away. So she runs away with a little coin purse. And then she takes the dragon as well. Good. Who is called, um, oh, what his name isn't, it's like Sir something. He has such a ridiculous name, bless him. And then when she's running away, she gets hit by, or she has to jump out of the way of a, um, carriage. She falls into a mud puddle and she loses her coins in the mud puddle. Mm. And the person, there's, there's like a scholarly person who owns, he's very wealthy, he owns the carriage and he is obsessed with learning about dragons and he has his friend in the carriage and his friend gets out and he helps her up and he's like, look, the least we can do is put you up in a inn for the night because it, you've lost yeah. your money because of us. And he assumes because she's got a dragon that she is like a wealthy person. Yeah. And then during the course of the evening when they have dinner, she finds out his father uh lost all their money to a uh like a scam basically and he's on his way to meet penelope to introduce himself to penelope to try and marry her for the dowry and eleanor's a little bit upset about it because she kind of likes him and she knows penelope's not very nice yeah and then that night she makes a wish that she wishes she was as uh, that she looked like this like socialite that's always in the London papers and then when she makes the wish to herself in the mirror the dragon breathes flames on her and then he Ooh. grows a little gold a gold um like row of scales on his body and she wakes up looking like that character that person that socialite oh my God. so then she has to pretend to be this socialite and she ends up back in her uncle's home pretending to be the socialite and they're all talking about how their like their disgusting cousin Eleanor ran away yeah. despite how well they looked after her, and she stole the dragon mm. and the guy that's hoping to marry Penelope wants to find Eleanor because she disappeared from the in room and was yeah. suddenly replaced with this old lady. Yeah. And yeah, and then there's other people Come into the house that are suitors hoping to marry Penelope. It's just, it was really fun. It was so really fun. fun. As I said, I don't know how much it follows the original story. I'm going to read it and find out. I, I think. don't. That's one of the ones I've never read or watched mm. the film for. 
that one. There we go. But this is the first in a series. I think the rest of it follows like different characters. But look, the little dragons. I like those covers though. They're very um, Regency romance style very as well. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do a mini shout out. I'm not going to talk about it too much. Mm-hmm. Just for you. Ah. If you want a really quick listen on everyone, that's a good time. Oh, yeah. Witches of New Orleans, it's two hours and 12 minutes. Here for a go? good time, not for a long time. Yeah. I think I've actually got this on my... I think it came up as a recommendation after some of girls It's literally to. five witches, they all fall in love and bang. And it's very one after the other. It's very succinct. They fall in love straight away, they don't really fight it. And yeah, 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 yeah. This came up as a, you might like this, when I read some girls. I think it was after I read the um, Broken Bond series. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Mm. So it's a really quick listen, especially ah. at the speed you listen. Yeah, ten, so, like 10 minutes. Yeah, if you're just <laughs> done. A bit of entertainment one day when you're cleaning or whatever. Yeah, perfect. perfect. Thank you. Uh, I listened to it. I was playing Sims. It was a good time. Mm. It was a good evening. I'd got a nice takeaway. Played Sims. Listened to that. Mm. It was a great evening. Living the dream. I oh, know. Uh, okay, the actual book I want to talk yeah, about. Yeah, go on. Uh, I read the first book in the Raven Cycle series, The Raven Boys. Oh, uh, yeah. So... I actually didn't know much about this series. I, it's always one I've been meaning to get to. It's one of those ones that, from the 2010s era... I've picked it up a couple of times and then put it down. I did do an Instagram poll saying, if I just miss the boat, shall I just skip it? And a yeah, lot of so people that. said, yeah, just skip it. <laughs> uh, audios and Everand recommend. Yeah, that's what I tried to listen to. Did it you on. not get into it? No, I think I just wasn't in the right headspace. And I always intended to come back mm. to it. And then everyone said, oh, you're fine, just skipping it. So I thought, oh, I'll just skip it. <laughs> I'm enjoying it quite okay. a lot. Mm. it definitely takes a while to build up so maybe mm. that's what you need to get past yeah maybe is it is a lot of world building setting up in the beginning yeah and like it makes you slowly love these characters you don't or love them all off the bat yeah so for those of you who have not read or heard of it I'm not going to read the description because it is five paragraphs long I'm going to give you my own version so we've got a private school we're in Henrietta Tennessee or Texas. I'm sorry. I should have checked that. I think it's Tennessee because they mention Tennessee accents quite a lot. So I'm going to go with Tennessee. <laughs> Is there quite even a not. Henrietta in Tex- Texas? I'm so sorry, Americans. I really don't know your geography. You shouldn't be expected to. Where is Hertfordshire in England? You don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hertfordshire, Europe. Where, where in Europe? <laughs> 27 countries why in europe do all is, right i mean is, we're are all we very talking different. swindon or paris like yeah. <laughs> anyway henrietta tennessee we're gonna go with that there's a posh private school these private school boys are not liked by the town around them who are generally working class and quite not well off mm. and these boys just get away with hell they get away doing whatever they want they've got rich parents who buy off the sheriffs and buy off the lawyers and blah 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 so there's a real divide in this town between the private school boys and their locals. Uh, one of our main guy characters, he has come to Henrietta because he is in search of ley lines. Henrietta <laughs> has ley lines, which are like lines of power that run through the whole world. He is following a myth that a Welsh king has been buried on these ley lines somewhere. Uh. And he will be bought. You can you can visit him and bring him back to life, and he will grant you one favor if you find him. Mm-hmm. And he is obsessed with this hunt. Yeah, he 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 persuades his rich father to pay for this thirty grand a year school just so he can be near where it might be. Be near where it might be, and he spends all of his free time basically researching this obsessively. Got to have a hobby. Yeah. But he's quite enigmatic. He's quite charming. He's a good guy. He's quite morally like. No, he's not black and white. He's very, like, morally on the white side of, like, what's good. Yeah. But he's picked a group of friends who are a bit nuanced. Hmm. So we've got... Ronan is... He's from a wealthy background, but, like, ill-gotten gains wealth. Mm. But he grew up wealthy. Mm. He used... He's quite reckless, quite a bit of a dick. But somehow people kind of are okay with his dickishness. He's one of those people that people... I don't know. He's, like, charming about it. No, he's not even charming. He's rude to everyone. Oh. But he just seems to make people like him somehow. (laughs) Or, like, he's always described as, like, this wild animal, like a Mm. caged animal kind of thing. It's the description of him quite a lot. He is a bit fucked up because he saw his dad die in front of him. And we find out more about that later. But 
basically he is going off the rails and Gandhi is desperately trying to keep him on the rails. Mm-hmm. And Ronan's loyal to Gandhi and, li- and Gandhi's like the only one he'll listen to. So like Gandhi's constantly having to come to break up fights, um, saving Ronan's butt all the time. You know, into stopping cops from arresting him. Like he is trying to keep his friend from going off the rails and mm. barely, barely keeping it going. And then they have another boy who's at the school, Adam, who is from the poor side of this town. He lives in a trailer park. His father beats him and his mother. He is working three jobs to put himself through this school because he believes this is the key to getting himself out of Henrietta. Yeah. And Did hopefully one day his mum... Stop it. I need to say the name of this town. It's a very important part of the story. Shouldn't have the same name as someone who reminds me of a song. (laughs) Just sing it in your inside thoughts. (laughs) (laughs) So Adam doesn't live... So they all live off campus. Adam doesn't live with them. He has a point of pride because he's like, I want to be my own man. I want to do this on my own if Gansey just pays for everything. Gansey would pay his fucking tuition if he asked. Mm. Like, Gansey is just all in with Adam. He's like so loyal to his friends. But he... He's three, four, five generations of wealth rich. Yeah, it means nothing to him. Like Money they means cannot nothing spend to him. It. It's so much. Yeah. yeah. He is blue-blooded to his core, but hates it. Mm. And is very. it really reminds me of, like, Great Gatsby kind of, like, existential crisis about wealth kind of stuff. Because Gandhi is like, I don't want to be a useless socialite mm. who just frips his money away like or five generations of people before me. I want to make a difference. I want to. Be, he doesn't like wealthy people. He doesn't like to hang out with wealthy people. He thinks he's not one of them. He one hundred percent is. Yeah. You know, he's got cult leader. Could be a governor vibes. Yeah. And Adam is like, he just doesn't see that pe- the way people gravitate towards him. Mm. And I, they spend a lot of time describing the different versions of Gandhi. And there is they call because his full name is like Richard something the fourth. But he goes by Gansey. Yeah. And, like, they describe when he goes into Rich Some the Fourth mode. And they're like, it's a different person. Yeah. And Gansey nearly dies when he's young. And that's when he hears some, some of the voice that saves him is the voice that tells him to go look for this king. So there's our, those are our boys. And there's Noah, who's just, like, smudgy and quiet. And we learn more about him later. Okay. Ronan, Adam, and Gansey all live off campus together. Adam. Not Adam, sorry. Ronan. Noah. Noah. Gansey live together. Adam still lives in the trailer park at the start. They come across Blue. She is the daughter <laughs> of a witch or psychic, basically. They're not witches, psychics. Clairvoyance. Clairvoyance. Mm. She grew up in a household full of round- women come and go at all times. It's all sort of family members or people they know. It's like sisterhood vibes. Just women come and go. Her house is always full of women mm. who are all psychics and she's the only one who's not a psychic. Aww. However... Her power, her power is that she amplifies other people's psychic abilities. Oh. But it also just starts to turn out she amplifies magic in general. Ah, okay. At first, when she meets the boys, she doesn't like them. They're rich boys. She's everything they've, she's been told to avoid. Also, there's a prophecy that every psychic that's ever met Blue that walks through the house goes, the first, your first true love that you kiss will die. So she's like, okay, I'm just never going to kiss anyone ever. I was going to say, and that's so like, she's never kissed. So yeah. she's like, that's a great plan. I'm just never going to kiss anyone yeah. ever. But now she's a teenager. And then she's like, oh. Mm, I kind of might like to kiss someone. And I'll just uh, kiss anyone and see if that works. <laughs> she kind of comes, she crosses paths with these boys. And then her weird, creepy half aunt who's come to town is like, yeah, that, that one of those boys is the one that's going to that's gonna die and that you're going to kiss. That's oh. your true love. And she's like, no, that one, it's Gansey. She's like, ew, no. No, thank you. I'd rather he died. <laughs> She's just like, no, I'm not. I'm never going to like him like that. She starts liking Adam in the beginning. Mm. And in the hunt for the ley lines, the boys... So act- does she live in the town? Yeah. Okay. She's one of their sort of working class poorer yeah, yeah. groups. She also works like three jobs around school. But she's kind of resigned herself to that she will always live in this town. She's yeah. not going to leave it. She'll never have a passport. Like, this yeah. is just as her life is this small life. And she's kind of okay with it, to be honest. Except she also hates that she's surrounded by the the supernatural and never able to see it or experience it. So when she finds out, it's because the boys come to the psychics thinking they might know something about the ley lines. Oh, yeah. And then her 
family kind of do and she's like what and they're like this is all tied up in your fate so we're not going to tell you ah. and it's like a whole thing bloody fortune tellers yeah they won't tell her so I think they know what's going to happen Aww. and at first her mum's like you're not allowed to hang out with these boys at all you're not allowed to go for this ley line hunt like whatever and it's her mum's always made a point of never telling her like no like she doesn't believe in commanding a child yeah so this is the first time my mother's ever gone you can't do a thing so blue's like i'm gonna do the thing yeah i'm gonna but her mom's like, she lives in a house with five psychics so they fucking know what she's doing yeah exactly but she ends up sneaking out to help the boys in their ley line hunt yeah. Um, They're like literally holding the door open yeah, yeah, for yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been conveniently quite easy. So she starts going on the adventures with Gandhi and the other boys to search for these ley lines. And like Gandhi just pisses her off because he's a rich boy who acts like a rich boy. And she like, he wears boat shoes unironically and she fucking hates him for it. She's all, he's always winding her up. He refuses to call her Blue because he says it's a weird name. He calls her Jane. Yeah. Rich um, boy stuff. Yeah. And like, there's quite a lot of times where, like, Adam has to be, like, he doesn't know he's doing it. He doesn't know he's being a prick. Like, because when they first meet, it's when they're... She's a waitress at a diner that all the posh kids go to because it's good you tips. You're fucking as a waitress in... What is going on with this yeah. description? Why is there so many things I don't it? know. <laughs> I think it's just warm in this room and you can't focus. I think I'm just losing the yeah. plot, yeah. Yeah, so they meet when Gandhi goes up to her and goes, my friend over there at that table find you attractive and would like your number but he's too chicken to come over and she's like well i'm working i'm not going to come over there leave me alone and he goes well i can pay you for your time oh no and he does not understand why that gets her back up immediately (sighs) he just does not get it and she hates him and but she finds a journal he leaves behind which is all of his notes and the hunt for this king Mm. And then she's like, I can't reconcile the boy in, boy in these pages to the boy I just met. Yeah. And then we kind of go for this journey of, like, she starts to... She's just fascinated by these pieces of Gandhi, this complicated person who's having a fucking existential crisis about his purpose in life. Because he's like, i got a second chance at life. I can't waste it. But I don't know what my purpose is. I don't, I don't know what, what I'll do. I want to do some good do, in yeah. this life. So it's just become all channeled in this search for this king. Uh... And with Blue at their side... Shit starts happening. Yeah. And Sounds fun. It's, it's a series, isn't yeah, it? Yes, a series. The ending book one is so good. Mm. The world is so rich. The characters are so rich. Like, it's it's one of those ones that gives, uh, it just gives me like it feels deep. Like you like you might not I know I haven't got all the puzzle pieces of some of these characters yet. Yeah. And maybe, like the maybe the, I'll give it another time. the reveal of like who Noah really is. The reveal of, like, Ronan's backstory. How many books is it? Like, four? four. Mm. The audios are, like, 11, 11 hours. hours. I looked, yeah. So, goodish length, but not too much. And the narration with, with the with the accent, especially mm. in the warm weather we've been having, and we're in a warm oh. we're in a warm place. It's just the vibe when I'm... Because I listen to this in the car. Yeah. And, like... Oh. windows open just and they're, they're like, yeah. also like I have a bit a little bit of that like, echolalia so like try not to talk in the accent I'm listening to and audio yeah, yeah. quite a lot it's been quite difficult and they have the different they have like the old wealthy south accent oh, yeah, yeah. you know the southern hospitality accent and then like the more common accent that Adam and Blue have and like Adam switching and they do that in the yeah narration. and the narration oh. switches that's cool. And also Gansey, from his point of view, doesn't talk like that. Uh, but when you see him being narrated from the other points of view... He does. He he has a very oh, that's posh... A really good, like the posh old yeah. money South accent. That's a really good thing to add in. Like yeah. A little, yeah. But in his narration, his POV, he doesn't speak like no. that. Oh, that's so um, cool. And I, I love all the accents and it's like this sort of... You know, this old money southern wealth that's kind of still there, but, like, obviously the, what it's rooted in is gone. Mm. And it's, like, this history with the Welsh kings and, like, they all speak Latin and it's, like, magic. I thought it was, like, set in a fantasy world. I didn't realise it was set in, like, oh, wow. Yeah, it's kind of urban fantasy, but in the countryside of... I don't know. I, I've, I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I did and it definitely took me a second to get into it. Like, you just get these puzzle pieces of these characters over, yeah. over time. I'll give it another chance then. Mm. I'm already half of, more than half through book, through book two. Mm, I went straight on. I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm here for this. I'm in now. I'm done. I'm going to listen to the whole thing. Long haul. Mm-hmm. 
Right, my last one is The Marriage Act by John Mars. You may remember I read the one by John Mars this was like years ago. And it was about in a uh, not so distant future in England, he writes these. They're all books are set in the same universe where they have this DNA testing that gives you your one match, like your soulmate. I feel like I remember this. Yeah, so it was so long ago. But this is set like not long after that. It's not it's not a sequel, but it's set in the same world where it's kind of gone further to the point that now we have this thing called the marriage act they have these like smart marriages because these are all like black mirror-esque warnings of what the uk could become so this marriage act there's these smart marriages and basically if you sign up to a smart marriage you have to put this like device it's like a siri thing in your house like a google home thing mm. and they listen in to 10 minutes randomly a day of like your house and they monitor to see where you land in terms of if your marriage is going well or not right and if they deem your marriage to not be going well due to what they're hearing you go up to like level one level one is when they give you push notifications of things you can try to do to make your marriage better so it's like why don't you talk to your partner about do do or compliments oh. are great but so. and then if they if the machine thinks you're still not or if their yeah. algorithm thinks your marriage still has issues it bumps up to level two and level two you get listened to 24 7 by the thing God. and then you can have sent in a marriage responder they're called so they will just rock up to your house and stay basically kind of like a marriage counselor but they literally have like a day's training and then they're sent hey. to do this counseling with you and they live with you for like yeah. six weeks or something and then at the end of that, they I can't see how that would fix a family relationship. And then at the end of that, they make their case of whether your marriage is saved. In yeah. which they go, you get blocked down a level. Fine, great. If they're like, no, they shouldn't be together. They tell a court you should be divorced, and then you have to go to a court, and the court decides whether you'll be divorced or. Oh my god! Being married, right? Yeah. With the one, it followed. I don't know, like four or five different people. And this is the same, it follows like a few different people. So you learn about like how it affects different members of society. Yeah. And in this world, all because it's very obviously heavily unofficially but Christian based because yeah. they're like, you should be married. So in this world, they want everyone to be married. So there's things like you can't get a promotion if you're not married. You lose, like, you have to pay more tax if you're not married. Right. If you upgrade to a smart marriage, you're allowed to move into, like, this bigger home and all of this. Right. Um, so one of the characters we follow is an older gentleman. I think he's, like, in his 60s and his wife has died. Mm. and um they're like okay well you you get given six weeks grace period then you have to be actively looking to get married again so he literally has to grieve like a 40-year marriage and then they want him to be dating in six weeks and looking to get married mm, because they say people are just society is happier if you're married and this is like and then there's a big resistance group they're obviously yeah. pushing against it it was it was really good. Mm. And another book in this uh world is called um The Family Experiment, which is my audiobook of that has come up and that's about the same universe in the UK where we've reached peak population. So you have to go on like a game show and if you win you're allowed to have a child. Um I don't mm. know if I mentioned I think I did another one in this bit is The Passengers, which is about self driving cars. I read that like no. last year. Or the year before. I don't, last I don't year. remember it anyway. But yeah, that, but that so doesn't mean much. They're really good. They're all very Black Mirror esque. Mm. Strongly recommend. If you can do them as audio, because all the different characters have a different narrator, which really brings it to life. Okay. It's also really scary because even though John Mars is like, oh, this could be the future, but ha ha, it does feel really, really mm. close. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I hate those things where it's like, this is just a hair's breadth from possibly could be reality. Like, it probably won't. It's a bit dystopian, but it's just but it's close enough to the line. Yeah. Like, I love Black Mirror stuff is like that. It's yeah. just close enough to that line. Yeah, before Netflix took over, I feel like they uh, dramatised it a bit too much. Mm, but, I, yeah. Actually, I was watching it during the pandemic, so that was probably the, the error. But I got to, like, season three and I had to stop. 
Well, the first two seasons are the Channel 4 seasons that were the best before Netflix got involved, yeah. Right. Yeah, I know it was a bit much for the pandemic. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I can imagine, yeah. Uh, Okay, my last one for today is actually one of our indies. Oh. (laughs) Bitten by Surprise, the Bitten series by Lizzie Gale. Yeah, I remember this name. So I had to self-add this to Storygraph, so if you're going to look at it, look at it on Amazon, because I haven't added the cover yet because I'm lazy. It's on there. This it, one? It, oh, it wasn't there before. Someone's added it now. Oh, the digital wasn't on there. Or it didn't come out with a session. Anyway. I, oh, I, no, yeah, look, there's your one. Yeah, my self-added one. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so this is about a vampire-hating psychic who is trying to develop a cure for vampirism. People find out what she's doing, crash her lab, steal her technology and her assistant who helped her make it. Uh, and just at the point where they've kind of almost got a working version of it, like a Aww. a cure for vampires, a vaccine kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And it turns out it works on shifters and stuff, but it's not quite it's not quite ready. But this gang that steals it puts it to market as it is, where it kind of reverses vampires, but reverses them to three hundred years old. <laughs> so it makes them human, yeah. but then it's a human three hundred year old body. So, so they, they decay, die? they die, yeah. which wasn't her intention. Well, no. Obviously. <laughs> I'm assuming her intention was to put them back to before they were yeah, turned yeah, into yeah, vampire. Yeah. They, they burned down her lab. So she's like, ah, oh, shit. She wallows in self-pity for a bit. Oh, fair enough. So her sister makes her go on a date. That date gets crashed by people trying to kidnap her. Oh. Because it turns out, not for the... No one knows she's done this vaccine, by the way. No oh. one knows it came from her. Turns out, because she's powerfully psychic, but has kept that hidden, because mm. she, thought she thought it shouldn't get out. Turns out she's right. Yeah. She used her psychic powers during the attack where her vaccine gets stolen. And people are coming to get her for that reason. Oh. So then the guy from the vamp- the supernatural government... So it's kind of urban fantasy, like, supernaturals are hidden. Mm. and they have, But they have their own government. And turns out a secret island where this government exists. Sounds legit. And a hot detective who happens to be a vampire. Oh, what a shame. Comes and saves the day. Tall, dark and broody. Tall, dark and broody, yep. White but- man. <laughs> yeah <laughs> was that this episode or last episode or was it in the break in between I can't remember no it was during an episode I was talking about shits and gigs clip that was last episode where it was yeah. a mixed guy talking about the fact he never realised tall dark and handsome referred to a white guy <laughs> and I was like it's a really good point yeah <laughs> so yeah uh, he rescues her and then she's and then he's like hey we know you're a really clever scientist but you're gonna come help work on the island for the government you're going to help us solve this case of this vaccine, not knowing she's the one who made it. I was going to say, yeah. Because it's been, it's been turned into a street drug weapon. He, They're like, you're going to try and help us figure out the chemical composition. She's like, I know the fucking chemical. So, I'm I mean, she lost, so all, quickly. she lost all her research, but she knows the chemical yeah. compounds and stuff. And they're like, then they save her family. So they bring her sister and her mum, who are witches with her. I was going to say, did they know she's psychic? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're witches, she's psychic. Their dad, the reason she was doing this is their dad got attacked and turned into a vampire. Oh, okay. But he was doing the same research as her. So in this world, when they're vampires, are they like... They're vampire, on, vampire. Do they carry on like having a job and stuff like that or... Well, they can't go in they day... Um, they The older you are, you can go in daylight. It just feels a bit uncomfortable. Younger ones can't do daylight, like the whole thing. They're very, they're finding it really hard to control their bloodlust in the beginning, okay. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that kind of vampire, yeah. But it turns out, She's been fed a lot of misinformation about vampires. And when she's around him, he's obviously older, obviously, and can control himself better. And she starts to learn that a lot of her prejudices were were unfounded. Obviously. And obviously he's hot. Mm. And he's like, yeah, you're the reincarnated soul of my my fated mate. Okay, you've lost me now. Yeah, I know. I didn't like that twist. No. Now I'm done. Oh, one move, one minute. <laughs> Sorry, her partner's ringing her because we've gone over too long. <laughs> yeah. And so they're, it's, they're really short books. They were 160 pages each. It was good fun. Yeah. I'm going to keep reading them just as they are very easy reading. Does it follow her, like their storyline? Yeah, I presume so. Because mm, okay. like the first case they're working on, no, the case doesn't wrap up. But yeah. Mm, that sounds fun. But yeah, it's 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 a bit more depth than I was expecting, to be honest. Yeah. With all the little backstory and stuff. Oh. But it's very easy reading. Don't take it too seriously. <laughs> but it's good writing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and they're on KU. Fun. Brilliant. 
Awesome. Well, okay. all you've done is add a load of shit to my TBR, thanks. You're welcome. Just a four book series and another five book series. Yes, fine. <laughs> I think the Bitten series, yeah, is quite a few books. Anyway. Brilliant. So, if you uh, haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, following, whatever the good stuff is, wherever you listen to this podcast. That would really help us out, especially if you review us or leave us a rating. You can also come chat with us in our Facebook group, which is Lazy Book Lovers Podcast, on our Discord, which is linked in the description. You could join our Ko-fi, which will get you a link to a more uh, exclusive Discord, and that would also just help us, help support us in uh, running this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, so we would love if you did all those things, please, and we will see you next week. Goodbye! Bye.